So it's been about four or five months since I've had it. Today we're going to be doing a full review on the Hammerhead Bull Shark, and uh, along with some of my thoughts and, and uh, conclusions uh, about the kayak. And uh, a little bit of news from Hammerhead Kayaks uh, about some of their future models and, and what's coming up for them. So stay tuned, you won't want to miss it. Good morning and welcome back. Uh, Dead or Alive kayaking and uh, today we're on the Conecuh River. Did something a little bit different. Uh, we put in there at River Falls and I'm actually going upstream now. And uh, I'm going to try to uh, finish up the full review on my, uh, on my Hammerhead Kayaks Bull Shark. And we're also trying out my new fish finder that I just installed and I want to spend a little bit of time while I'm up here and see if I can find a way to quiet that creaking in the uh, in the pedal drive. Now I brought both drives with me so uh, during the uh, the review I'll be able to uh, to swap them back and, and show you a few things and I also got a couple of little small add-ons to the kayak that I want to show you while we're at it too. Of course there hadn't been a breath of wind all day until I actually got in the kayak and left the boat ramp and then the wind started blowing. But maybe it's not too bad on, uh, on my audio. So. Right now, I'm not getting any creaking out of this pedal drive. It's uh, it's actually fairly quiet, and, and the only noise I'm hearing is is the noise that that you hear in pretty much all pedal drives, and that'll be the uh, the internal mechanics of the drive itself moving. If that continues to work and, and continues to keep it quiet, I'll show you what I did. It was a super easy fix. And I also want to talk about, uh, I stopped by and talked to Eddie Murphy at Hammerhead Kayak, Kayaks in uh, Theodore, just outside of Mobile, uh, last week or week before. And uh, enjoyed talking with him. I'll tell you guys what, if, uh, if everybody I did business with was, was like him, uh, it'd be a better, a better world, a better place to live. But, uh, he, uh, he shared some news with me about some of the uh, things coming up for, for the company. And, uh, and I'll share some of that with you as, as we go too. I didn't really mean to fish today coming out, but I mean, kayak, water, I couldn't help myself. Uh, I've had this thing for, I don't know, a, a few months now. Um, I've probably put eight or ten or twelve different people on it uh, with both drives, with, with the uh, propeller drive and the fin drive. And these people were all of varying degrees of, of expertise in kayaking and experience in kayaking. And they were also varied in what they get out of kayaking. Some were uh, sightseers, uh, you know, recreational paddlers, and, uh, and some were, were fishermen. And the split seemed to be pretty even down the middle between the propeller drive and the fin drive, and it pretty much followed the lines of uh, the, the fishermen and the sightseers. The sightseers tend to like the, the fin drive, and uh, the fishermen tend to like the, the instant reverse available in the propeller drive. So no big surprise there. I wanted to try out both of them because I had never tried out a, a uh, pedal drive before. And I wanted to try both of them. So uh, so I got both. I, I got the Bull Shark that has an inter interchangeable drive. 
I think if I was just going to buy a kayak to fish on, uh, I would have gone with the with the uh, Tiger Shark, the Hammerhead Kayaks Tiger Shark. It's a little bit longer than this, very similar in layout. A little bit longer, it's got a bigger trunk in the front, and uh, but it's strictly a propeller drive. You don't have the option to swap over to a fin drive on it. But it's, I think, 13 or 13 and a half feet long, 13 feet long, I guess. And, and the same price, uh, by, you know, by, by my accounting, it, it'd be a, a better kayak suited for, for just fishing unless you got in really tight places, you know, where, where the extra length might cause you a problem turning around or something. But uh, when I was talking to Eddie the other day at, uh, at his place, there, uh, it, it seems like, at least for the time being, there won't be any more tiger sharks. They uh, had an accident at the factory and actually broke the mold for the tiger shark kayaks. And these molds are insanely expensive. So, uh, so they've done with the tiger shark for a little bit. However, the, there is some good news. If you're a, a bigger guy or you like camping and carrying a lot of gear with you or, or something like that, the uh, Hammerhead had a paddle only, a paddle only kayak called the Whale Shark. It was a, a pretty good sized kayak, and uh, it has not been a big seller and, and is being discontinued. But the uh, the name is going to another kayak that's coming out, and this kayak is 13 and a half feet long. It's a pedal drive uh, with the propeller drive. Uh, huge it's 37 feet uh, 37 feet 37 inches wide um, it has the flush mount rod holders in the back instead of two of them in the back it has four in the back two in the front uh, pretty much the same style seat as this um, in fact I think he said it was the same seat that, that the bull shark uses and uh, has a, a weight capacity just I don't see if I can get that sun out of y'all's eyes. The uh, the weight capacity on this thing coming up uh, exceeds anything I know of on the market in the same class. I mean, it, it's uh, like 600 pounds or something like that. It, it was uh, an insane amount of capacity for it. But it'll be the next generation whale shark, and. Uh, I think uh, it, it's probably more befitting that it's the whale shark because it's such a, a bigger, beefier kayak. Anyway, look for that to come out, and I'll, I'll get back to talking about the bull shark now. Um, like I said, I've put a lot of people on it. They were pretty evenly split uh, about which drive they liked, and I've, I've got a list on my phone of, of pros and cons that I that I meant to get. To uh, go over for this video, and of course my phone is back here in my dry bag, and I can't get to it right now. But that was one of the cons uh, that I had on there about it is with the with the drive so far forward, you have to adjust the seat way forward to just to be able to reach it. Now I'm not. Uh, super tall and, and, and I'm, I'm not short, I'm probably about average, I'm about six foot tall. And uh, when I've got the seat adjusted right now to where I can reach the pedals, the deck hatch under here is right under me, it's, it's not accessible to me. And in order to be able to access it, I have to, to get off somewhere, loosen up the whole seat, slide it back, and then I can get into the, into the hatch. I'd like to see it, if, if the seat has to be so far forward, I'd like to see the hatch back behind the seat, you know, where you would probably still have to stop and, and get out of the kayak to access it, but you wouldn't have to move your seat around and everything else the this, this same way. It'd be a, a little bit easier to get to. A um, couple of the other things that I had, uh, had written down originally as as cons on, on the kayak. Uh, one of them was that the seat was so low and and not adjustable. And uh, 
I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll edit in some video of, of the uh, solution for that. When I went by to talk to Eddie about it, uh, they actually built or he actually had risers for the seat that lifted it up oh, probably four inches or so. And, uh, you know, no instructions come with them, but it's pretty straightforward, easy to figure out. And uh, it, it was real simple. That's one thing I like about almost everything on this kayak is everything about it is simple to figure out, simple to work on, simple to change or modify if you want to. Um, one of the things, all of the connections that I've seen so far where the uh, the slide locks and, and the uh, the shielding for the uh, transducer on, on the bottom of the kayak, everything, all have rib nuts molded into the kayak. So there there are very few holes anywhere in this kayak. It seems to me like it would be very difficult for water to actually get into the hull. Uh, now, of course, it's a kayak and water gets into the holes on pretty much all kayaks but there aren't nearly as many ways for water to get into the hull on this boat as, as there are some others on the market. So that's a, a big plus I, I really like about it. I've not found any water yet anywhere in the hull, excuse me, after I've used it. Uh, I have found a little bit of water in one of the drive cartridges and I don't matter, I don't remember which, but uh, it has a molding plug on it and that molding plug was loose I pushed it back in so hopefully that problem is solved now. So if you saw the uh, stability and fishability videos on, on this kayak uh, you, you saw or heard the uh, creaking noise that this propeller drive was making and uh, when I stopped by to, to talk to uh, Eddie about it he gave me a, a new yoke to put on up here and uh, he felt like that was the only place that that the uh, noise could have been coming from was right in the yoke and uh, so I went out and I was getting ready to change the yoke out and put the new one in and uh, I happened to notice farther down on on the uh, actually on the drive cartridge itself right where the drive goes through down to the water there was a little divot worn out of the uh, out of the plastic there and uh, the creek was not a long creek it was a very short sharp creek that it was doing so it, it would have been a little small spot and, and I kind of felt like that little divot was where it was creaking and it eroded the plastic wore it out right there in that one little spot and uh, and I do actually see the as I pedal, as I torque side to side, I, I do see a, a tiny bit of motion in the uh, in the drive itself uh, as it moves back and forth right there. So what I did was I took a, a small strip of uh, rubber tape. It's real similar to uh, electrician's tape. It's just a little bit thicker. And I laid it across right there on top of where that divot was at and uh, just to see if, if that would help. On the... Uh, on the underside of the flange of the drive there, there's a cast mark. The, uh, another one of the things that I really like about these drives is the, the body of the drive itself is all metal rather than plastic. But there's a, a cast mark on the underside of that metal there that's got just a little nub sticking down and I think that's what was actually wearing out that, that divot in the plastic. So uh, if this stays quiet like it is right now, when I get home I'll, I'll uh, take a little file or, or a uh, grinder or something and I'll smooth off that, that tiny little, I mean it's just the smallest little nub. But it obviously or apparently was enough to make some noise and, and cause a problem there. Now I said that uh, one of the things that I really liked about this propeller drive was that it was an all metal body and uh, just seems less subject to breaking to me. Okay, uh, the other thing, the, the fin drive. Uh, I, I've, I really like it, I like the power, I like the torque that, that you're able to generate with, with the uh, fin drive as opposed to the propeller drive. The propeller drive is, is not for racing. It's, uh, it, it's for doing what I'm doing right now, easing around real slow. And uh, the, the fin drive, just 
gives you a lot more power, a lot more speed. Had there been any more current today on the river, I, I probably would have been better served. A big fish. I probably would have been better served using the fin drive to come upstream than the uh, propeller drive. But no current hardly. I don't think they're generating right now, so it, it's not a big deal. The, uh, the fin drive is uh, easy to work on. I had a, a little adjustment that I made on it earlier today. One of the fins was, when they were in the center position, one of them was cocked off and not in the center. It was uh, off to one side. And all it involved was counting the threads on the nuts that uh, the cables that come up into the body of the drive to see how tight they had the nuts and then I took it loose and uh, took the chain loose on on the on the uh, drive and straightened the fins back up in the center position tightened the chain back up put the cable back in tighten the nut back to where it was perfect it, it uh, I've, I've never fooled with one of these drives before uh, I've, I've never taken one apart I have no idea you know, all the mechanics, of, I have no idea about all the mechanics about how they work, but it was easy enough to look at it and figure out if I want this fin back over here, you know, I'd just take the chain loose and, and uh, move it over a couple of sprockets and put the chain back and, and got it aligned. It wasn't any problem. Sure, I'm seeing a lot of ducks. That's the third set of wood ducks that's come by me right there. So anyway, the uh, the pedal drive works great for me. Uh, I, I really like that it's being quiet today, and, and I'm hoping that I've got that problem solved. And uh, Eddie, I'll, I'll take some pictures of, of it and what I found and what I did and, and get those to you as well. Like I said, one of the things that I had planned to talk about as, as a con on this kayak was how low the seat was. and. Uh, Eddie apparently read my mind and, and uh, came up with the risers for it to lift the seat, but that's going to be uh, kind of a temporary fix for the problem because the next generation seats that are coming out for this will be adjustable, will we'll have adjustments. Uh, in fact, the, he, he mentioned some seats with armrests on them, you could get with armrests or, or not with armrests and, and uh, high and low positions and just a, a, a lot of different improvements. Eddie is, uh, is, is certainly one that listens to feedback and, uh, and, and looks at you know, what he perceives as, as a potential problem or a potential way to, to make the kayak better. And, uh, and he acts on it. Uh, just the, the fact that, uh, that he had the, uh, the seat risers already in when I stopped by his place and uh, and was already planning on the seat risers to be a temporary fix because he was going to improve the seat so that you had higher and lower seating and uh, uh, just really impressed. A few more things that I like about this this kayak uh, and, and I'm no expert on pedal drive kayaks by any stretch of the imagination. This is the first one I've, not only the first one I've ever owned, it's the first one I've ever been on. Uh, it is, in fact, still the only one I've ever been on. And, uh, but I, I did research a lot of them and, and, uh, and came up with, with some other things, just little details uh, like the rib nuts all over it instead of holes through the hull. Uh, that I really liked. And another thing that I really liked was that the uh, rudder controls, the, the cables that go back after, are actually steel cables, stainless steel cables, rather than cordage. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure they'll break or wear out or something. Eventually everything, everything breaks and wears out eventually. But uh, I don't think that they'll break or wear out as, as quickly as cordage would. One thing I would like to see in, in the future, uh, besides that you have a, a cartridge here for the propeller drive, you have a different cartridge for the uh, fin drive, 
<clears throat> and I've used the kayak sometimes with no drive. Uh, in fact, downstream on this same river where the water is so shallow, uh, I, I went and I didn't even bring a drive with me because I knew the water was shallow there. So if we had a cartridge that sat down in here that just had a, a, an open, you know, a hatch on top of it, you know, where it was just the whole cartridge was dry storage instead of uh, dead space or whatever, uh, it would give you that much, of, that much more available to you in the way of, of internal storage. Uh, another thing that I liked about this kayak was the fact that it's transducer ready. Um, not all kayaks are. Some of them you have to have a, an arm that goes over the side. And, and uh, if it hadn't been transducer ready, I probably never would have developed any interest in even putting a fish finder on here. Uh, like I said, I don't have one on any of my other kayaks, and and, uh, and you know, to be honest, I haven't really missed it. But uh, since this one was transducer ready, and and I came across a good deal on a fish finder, uh, it, it only made sense to try it out and see how easy it was to install that and and get it run. A couple other things that. Uh, some add-ons that Eddie has gotten in stock for this for this kayak. If uh, if you wanted to take it a step farther than the pedal drive, if you wanted to motorize your kayak, uh, there is a cartridge that fits down inside, or a you know, unit that fits down inside the cartridge for the fin drive that locks in, and it'll hold a Bixby jet. And uh, of course, it's got all the controls that come up and. Uh, you know that where you can control the motor and uh, and then the whole kit the, the big speed jet kit comes with the battery pack and everything else that you need with it and it fits right up under your seat but uh, if, if you wanted to motorize your kayak and, and keep the same configuration you know or, or be able to go back to a pedal drive with without having to take a lot of stuff apart and all that's certainly an option now and just like that, change the cartridges, drop my fin drive in, turn the locks for it. And I'm in business for a fin drive. I'm still up in pretty shallow water, so this is where a fin drive shines. You just feather those fins a little bit. And see, much quieter. I'm actually running at the same two miles an hour that I was with the propeller drive a while ago. So one of the things that I found out when I went and talked to Eddie up at Hammerhead was let's say you're using your fin drive and you run up into shallow water to fish and you have to lift the drive out. Now, now we have a pretty big hole here in the kayak that uh, with the propeller drive it's not a problem. You put the console back over it, it pretty much closes that off. Now, with the fin drive though, and keep in mind, you're probably going to be choosing your drive before you ever leave the house. So, you know, if, if I'm out on the water with the fin drive, this is probably what I decided on and probably what I've got with me. But now, 
if I drop a fish, drop a pair of pliers, drop my camera, uh, anything, and it hits there, it's gone. So they have this is a plug just fits straight down in there. Straight down in. Turn your locks just like you would with a uh, with a regular drive. And now that hole is mostly plugged up. And, uh, uh, if I dropped a fish or dropped a pair of pliers or something like that, I'm not going to lose it. It's going to be right here on, on the side or on top. And, uh, and that's closed off so that uh, I don't have that big, huge hole in the bottom again. So it's pretty certain to me that... Uh, as long as you're not interested in backing up, the the fin drive is actually the way to go. And that really surprises me because I had decided before I ever even heard of the bull shark that I wanted a propeller drive. And uh, and I was interested or curious to, to try out both of them. A big old gar. I was uh, curious to try out both of them and uh, see uh, see for myself what the differences were. But, uh, I've been really surprised at how much I like the uh, the fin drive and how natural the movement was. That was one of the things about it. Is I thought that the back and forth pedaling motion just would feel kind of unnatural to me rather than the uh, rotary motion of the propeller drive. But that hadn't been the case at all. I've, uh, I really like the fin drive and the propeller drive. Uh, I would use fishing mostly like lakes and ponds and stuff like that, places where, where I might need the backup. I just stopped at the store to get a drink and I realized that uh, I hadn't showed you those seat risers that I was talking about. These replace the, uh, the standard hardware and the standard hardware has the, uh, the bar sitting almost flat down on the rail, just a, just a little bit above it, maybe a quarter inch or so. And these gave me about four inches of, of lift, gave me some uh, room to put something or slide something under the seat. I don't think that I'll I don't think I'll still have enough room to uh, to build a junk drawer to go under here because of uh, because of the hatch up there. But uh, like I said, I'd, I'd like to see you see how much space is behind the seat right here. And, and I mean, seriously, nobody's got that long of legs. You know, if nothing else, I'd like to see that hatch move back to here uh, just to, to free up the, the deck, you know, to open up the deck and, and keep it clear up there. And it would make it accessible from, from right here without having to move the seat. But like I said, I just wanted to show you these seat risers real quick. And uh, putting them on was, was a super easy thing to do and, and uh, made a world of difference in, in comfort. And, and I was already comfortable to begin with on the kayak. And uh, it just made it even more so. So in summary, I'm going to say that the uh, the bull shark was a good buy for me. Uh, I've really enjoyed owning it. I've really enjoyed getting out on the water with it. And, and uh, I, I've really actually enjoyed both drives. And I've enjoyed it with no drive. So uh, it, it's a versatile boat. Uh, I've had it for oh, probably four months now, three or four months, five months, something like that. Uh, I've used it a lot. I told y'all when I first got it, I was going to be using it a lot. And, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is I'm not at all unhappy with it. I, uh, I, I like the boat. And like I said, I'm, I'm thinking it was a good buy for me. If you guys want to check out some of the, some of the models, 
I'll put the uh, the address and and Eddie's information in the description again. But Hammerhead Kayaks down in Theodore. It's an easy place to find. Uh, my GPS took me right to it, and Eddie is there. And and uh, like I said, in, enjoys talking kayaks. He doesn't sell kayaks as you know, for his living. He uh, he sells kayaks because he enjoys it and and uh, and likes doing it, and, and he's in a position to be able to do so. So uh, stop in and talk to him and. Uh, Take a look at some of the models that he's got on the floor there. And uh, some of the accessories he's got in, in his showroom. I guarantee you, uh, you wouldn't be disappointed with, with any of his kayaks. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed this one immensely so far. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.